The year is 2017. Big Shaq was teaching us quick maths. There was a total solar eclipse. And everyone in the world was collectively listening to Despacito. It was a simpler time. Cryptocurrency was pretty well established, and ever since Mt. Gox was shut down in 2014, people had been trading Bitcoin on websites slightly more legitimate than a literal stock market for Magic the Gathering cards. As demand increased for cryptocurrency, during 2017, the value of a single Bitcoin skyrocketed from under $1,000 to almost $20,000 during that year alone. But what if 20,000% profit just simply isn't enough for me and I want to make more on crypto than all those simpletons investing in Bitcoin? Enter BitConnect. Today, BitConnect is long gone, but it's left me wondering, what really happened with BitConnect? And what happened to its icon and possibly the best living meme in the world, Carlos Matos? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. What's so, 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 The world is not anymore the way it used to be. No, no, no. My wife still doesn't believe in me. I'm telling him, Bohani, listen, this is real. No, 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 no. That's a scam. What am I going to do? Faith and belief is the one thing that we all need to be able to change the world. I love Big Connect! Hey everybody, I'm Jabroni. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I test e-girls bathwater, investigate dangerous Instagrammers, and make documentaries about Soldier Boy so he'll unblock me on Twitter. It worked. I don't know how to explain that to people, so I just tell them I explore the internet's weird side on my channel. I was looking at old memes the other day and I stumbled across a bunch featuring Carlos Matos, the face of BitConnect. And it got me wondering, what really happened with BitConnect? And whatever ended up happening with Carlos? So I started digging. The first thing I looked into was how did BitConnect actually work? I understood back in 2017 that it was some kind of scam. But that was about it. Here's what I found out. BitConnect told investors the way that it worked was they had a trading bot that traded Bitcoin and made small profits throughout the day, buying low and selling high. They called this bot a volatility software. But a trading bot like this needs lots of money to work with. So they asked people to give them money to fund the software's day trading. In exchange, they gave users their own cryptocurrency, BitConnect Coin, or BCC. BitConnect only accepted payments in Bitcoin. BitConnect coin was worth a share of all the profits the bot was generating each day. Since the volatility software was so advanced and intelligent, the value of BitConnect coin could only go up. BitConnect was so confident in their algorithm that they guaranteed returns to potential investors. The more money you put in and the longer you were willing to leave it in the system, the higher interest rates you were guaranteed. Signing a contract to leave my money locked up doesn't sound like a bad idea if I'm guaranteed profits, right? BitConnect also had an affiliate program that allowed investors to recruit other people and earn a percentage of their profits too by using a referral code. The affiliate program was explained using some helpful illustrations on BitConnect's website that look suspiciously pyramid-like. No red flags here, only profit. BitConnect was extremely popular and climbed to be the 13th largest cryptocurrency and have a total value of $900 million by the beginning of October 2017. YouTubers, social media gurus, guys that wear t-shirts that say entrepreneur on them, and cryptocurrency promoters worldwide were singing the praises of BitConnect and dropping their referral links all over the internet. There was one small problem with the volatility software though. It never existed. On October 28, 2017, BitConnect had their first and last annual ceremony at the Royal Cliff Hotel's Peach Convention Center in Pattaya, Thailand. Over 2,000 people attended, and the ceremony was live streamed on YouTube. 
BitConnect has since deleted the video, but it was archived, and it was at this ceremony that the world met Carlos. The hosts introduce him only as Carlos from New York, and his charismatic and hilarious performance was by far the most memorable part of this entire ceremony that lasted over four hours. He mentions that his wife doesn't believe him when he talks about BitConnect and she thinks it's a scam. But Carlos was so incredibly confident that all we need is faith to believe and change the world, I almost wanted to start to believe him. The aim of the ceremony seems to have been to generate even more hype for BitConnect and raise more money from investors. The extreme opulence of the ceremony added to the legitimacy of BitConnect. If BitConnect was a scam, how did they afford to give away cash prizes of tens of thousands of dollars to these promoters who attended? If they weren't generating real profits from their volatility software, how did they give away Lamborghinis and Ferraris to these people? And how did they drop $100 bills all over their audience? As it turns out, each person in the audience lent at least $20,000 to BitConnect in July 2017 just to be there. The venue held about 2,000 people, and by the look of it, they had at least that many people in attendance. These people were true believers, and odds are most of them invested more than $20,000. Even if all of them invested just the bare minimum 20k, that means BitConnect raised over 40 million dollars from these people for the ceremony. A Ferrari is a cheap door prize for this thing. After the ceremony, Carlos became a massive living meme. H3H3 made a video about him that got over 6 million views. Keegan-Michael Key did a whole skit on The John Oliver Show impersonating Carlos. But what wasn't a meme was the amount of money they raised after the event. BitConnect coin grew to $2.6 billion by early January of 2018, with coins being traded over $422 a piece. But unfortunately for Carlos and all his fellow believers, the world hadn't changed. Carlos's wife was right. I was downsized, actually thrown out on the street in December from a job I'd had for 20 years. I had no chance of making it on my social security and I was out looking for a job. $56,000 and I started with 11. You can do the same thing. I, I want you, I want you to know that if you're just struggling to get by on Social Security, it doesn't have to be that way. Take $100, join me here on BitConnect, and I'll show you how. Uh, there's just no, no reason everybody shouldn't have this same joy. On November 7th, 2017, the UK government issued BitConnect an ultimatum to prove its legitimacy within two months or be forced to shut down. Then two states in the US, Texas and North Carolina, issued letters warning investors that BitConnect was a Ponzi scheme and ordering BitConnect to cease and desist all operations. BitConnect officially shut down January 16th, 2018, after the government pressure reached a fever pitch. By January 18th, the price had fallen to $25 a coin. The FBI started an investigation almost immediately and posted this page in February looking for victims. And there were a lot of victims. An estimated 1.5 million people invested billions of dollars into BitConnect, with many people losing their entire life savings. Since BitConnect only accepted payments in Bitcoin, none of the transactions are traceable, and the people at the top of the pyramid most likely got away with billions of dollars of Bitcoin. That isn't to say no one got in trouble. A lot of the head promoters were prosecuted, especially the ones who showed their faces at the ceremony in Thailand. YouTuber Trevin James, who pushed BitConnect hard to his audience, said he was being investigated by the SEC and the FBI. John Bigoton, the Australian head of promotion, is still in court to this day over his involvement with BitConnect, and he's been banned from working in finance for seven years. Once his case is over, he may end up in prison. The head of BitConnect in India, Darji Divyesh, was arrested in 2018 for his involvement when he was traveling from Dubai back to India. Apparently, he didn't learn his lesson because he went right back to promoting questionable crypto schemes in 2019. There were a lot more people who promoted BitConnect who have been named in various government investigations and civil lawsuits around the world. Too many for me to talk about in one video. But that made me wonder, who was at the very top of this thing? The people who showed their faces on stage in Thailand certainly bear a lot of responsibility for parting people with their money, but I wish I could know who they were working for. Who told them about BitConnect and convinced them to promote it, give their money to it, and get others to do the same? I would imagine that several governments around the world have been trying to figure this out as well. 
BitConnect was registered as a company in the UK on July 14th, 2016 by someone named Ken Fitzsimmons. There is no other trace of this guy online. YouTubers at the time even went so far as to call the registered office from this filing, only to find that no one actually worked in the office there. There was another company set up also in the UK that listed several of the top promoters as directors, but has since been dissolved. Another one of the top promoters was Glenn Arcaro, who mentioned in a couple of videos that the company was actually working out of offices in Dubai, which would line up with Divyesh's arrest. It seems to me that a core group of people at the top of BitConnect set up phony shell companies in the UK and then went to Dubai and began running one of the most aggressive and successful scams in history. But what about Carlos? Well, fortunately for him, he was never invited to any secret meetings in Dubai. Hey, this is John. <clears throat> I made a video earlier. It may have a little foul language in it, and I apologize. Uh, I try not to talk that way, but you know, by God, I'm hurt. And I know there's a million others hurt out there. You know, I got into BitConnect, and uh, just like you, you, most of you did, with hopes and dreams. I have a son with autism. I was hoping and dreaming, you know, and thought, all right, you know, this is something I can do besides this daily grind that doesn't get me anywhere. Uh, and actually have some money for him and, and money for stem cell therapy and just money when I die, you know, that he'll be able to, that someone will be able to take out of the wallet and, uh, and help him along. In May of 2019, Carlos posted a video on his personal YouTube channel called The Truth About BitConnect, Other Scams, and Carlos Matos. In it, he says that he was scammed, and all in all, he's lost over $100,000 to various online scams, including BitConnect. Carlos says he still lives in New York, and he's a therapist that works with children on the autism spectrum. He says his goal is to become a board-certified behavioral analyst. He said his wife sees him as a failure, and that he's failed in his relationship with her. He said he wants to be successful online and offline, and it's kind of a turn over a new leaf type video. Carlos talks a lot about making progress in life no matter what, saying that even if he fails, he can still look at it as a learning opportunity. To this day, he's still active on social media. Recently, he showed a video where he went to pick up his new Tesla, and streaming on YouTube seems to be his favorite way to connect with viewers. Some of these streams veer into weird territory with Carlos monologuing in a pitch black room talking about whatever comes to his mind. Overall though, he seems to have a very positive outlook on the future, despite his setbacks, and he encourages his viewers to do the same. All in all, I think Carlos was just a good guy who got pulled into something that turned out to be too good to be true. There's no evidence to suggest that he was one of the masterminds behind BitConnect or that he made a lot of money off of it. On the contrary, I think he really did lose a lot of money. I wish Carlos nothing but the best in the future, and I'm excited to see what he does in the future on YouTube and elsewhere. And so now you know what happened to Carlos Matos and BitConnect. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Stay weird, internet.